this video will cover two common hand injuries, the boxer fracture with a focus on the mid-shaft fracture of the little finger and the mallet finger with a focus on the ring finger. The clinical presentation of each of these injuries will be described, followed by the normal anatomy as well as a brief outline of the pathology involved. Necessary assessment and investigations for each will be included. Management will focus on fractures which do not require closed reduction. An outline of how to refer for rehabilitation will be given. A 21-year-old male was involved in a fight. He sustained a laceration over the little finger. He presented five days later with increasing pain and swelling. On the right-hand side, one can see the normal anatomy of the metacarpals. However, in a box of fracture, there is an impaction injury, almost always due to a direct blow to a clenched fist, hitting against a solid surface. Most commonly, it is minimally impacted, and there is usually a transverse fracture, angulated dorsally, as depicted on the image on the left. While looking at the hand, we would expect to see swelling at the dorsum of the hand, bruising, which usually occurs later, a visible rotational deformity, and loss of the metacarpophalangeal prominence of the little finger. On feeling, one will notice generalized swelling, bony tenderness over the little finger, and crepitus if there is a severely displaced fracture. On moving, you would check for rotational deformity by gently flexing the fingers into the palm. If the little finger overlaps the ring finger, or vice versa, there is a rotational deformity. When requesting an x-ray, ask for an anterior posterior, lateral and oblique view of the hand. Approach to management, as with any other condition, is divided into pharmacological, which includes adequate analgesia, non-pharmacological, which includes cleaning and irrigation of lacerations and abrasions of the skin, the rehabilitation of this fracture involves the use of a boxer splint. We will briefly explain how this is used. The fractures occurred at the mid shaft of the little finger. The splint is only an ulna gutter. It covers the dorsal and volar surfaces of the hand, as well as the fourth metacarpal. Swelling usually accompanies a boxer fracture. Therefore, using a tubi grip alleviates the irritation caused by the swelling inside the splint. The hand is positioned in 20 degrees extension. This allows the wrist to be in the functional position. This position allows patients to reach for items. The fingers also need to be buddy strapped. This involves the little and ring finger being strapped together. However, these two fingers can't be too far apart or too tightly squeezed. Ensure your patient is relaxed. Use a long piece of strapping tape, strapped diagonally at the base of the metacarpals. Repeat this just above the DIPJ but be careful not to cover the DIPJ. This ensures that these two fingers can't rotate or deviate. A 27-year-old male presents to the trauma unit after a ball hit the tip of his index finger during a basketball match. He now complains of pain on the tip of his index finger on the dorsal surface along with swelling and bruising. He is also unable to extend the tip of his finger. The normal anatomy of the muscles, tendons and bones of the hand are displayed in the image. In a mallet finger injury, there is disruption to the extensor mechanism, often due to a direct force applied to the tip of the finger. While looking at the injured finger, you will see it is flexed at the DIP joint. You will also notice swelling at the dorsum of the injured finger. Bruising will usually occur after 48 hours and there will be a deformity present. When feeling, you will feel localized swelling, warmth and tenderness over the injured finger. When moving the finger, isolate the extensor tendon by holding the PIPJ in full extension you will find full passive extension of the DIPJ, but no active extension. As with boxer fracture, you will request an AP lateral and oblique view x-ray of both wrists and hands. The management is as for boxer fracture. However, the immobilization and splinting differs. Rehabilitation involves using a mallet splint. 
For the purposes of this demonstration, the splint will be done on the ring finger. The mallet finger will have a DIPJ lag. The aim of the mallet splint is to extend the DIPJ while allowing the PIPJ to flex. The PIPJ should not be immobilized. When removing the splint, ensure the hand is flat on the table. Remove the splint, wash and dry the finger on the table, slide the splint back on and strap it into position. Ensure it is stable. When referring for splinting, it is important to include the following. The patient's name, folder number and diagnosis. With regards to the diagnosis, describe in full x-ray findings and associated injuries. Include the mechanism of injury, date of injury and date of surgery if performed. Also include any management you and your team have implemented. Specify exactly what you would like done for the patient. It is important to refer early to avoid stiffness and improve the outcome. Remember that the golden time frame for the hand is 8 to 12 weeks. Do not wait for the patient to be stiff plus 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 plus. We hope this video helps you to make swift and accurate decisions regarding boxer fracture and mallet finger.